fighting fire ants. Uh, can be, you can be successful with control. Before you read, uh, before you use any pesticide product, always read and follow the pesticide label, ensuring that you wear any personal protection equipment described by that label that a user of that product uh, must use because the label is the law and your purchase of the product is uh, more or less a contract between you and the manufacturer of that product that you're going to use that product in a manner consistent with its label. The label is the law. If the label refers you to a website or some other publication that you have to go and get, that also is part of the product labeling. Sometimes these labels are hard to find. <coughs> you have to peel them open quite often if you get that much information on a label. So look hard for your label. Pesticide products are going to have several statements on their label. Uh, a pesticide product will have a brand name, which is the common name that we go out and buy. This one just happens to be Ortho Fire Ant Killer. And I do want to thank Southeastern Farmers Co-op uh, and Elders, Case, uh, Elders Ace Hardware for their support in uh, the uh, production of this uh, demonstration today. But that product has, uh, on the front panel, will have the trade name, the manufacturer, the trade name, uh, the signal word. And whenever UGA Extension makes a homeowner recommendation, such as to this audience, we always select the least toxic product with the signal word caution. There are three signal words to be aware of, caution, warning, and danger. Sometimes danger is followed by poison, uh, the word poison. But those are in order, the least to most toxic uh, as related as a signal word describes to you. Caution, warning, danger, or danger poison. So, Whenever you select a pesticide, you may want to have that as a consideration. What is the signal word on there? Right underneath that signal word will be, come, will be some precautions. See the back panel for precautionary statements. And then the next part is the active ingredient. That's the uh, section of the label that describes what's in this product. The active ingredient is the stuff that's in the product that causes the effect. Typically, the, the effect is control of the pest. So the active ingredient must always be spelled out. You'll also see a listing on that section of the label describing inert ingredients. Inert ingredients are usually proprietary, uh, known only by the manufacturer of the product. Often they're in there to make the product deliverable, deliverable to you in this manner, or to make the product more safer to the environment, more safer to the user, or more effective once it is applied. Also on this label you will find statements of uh, first aid, what to, what to do in case somebody is accidentally poisoned by this product. Precautionary statements that describes hazards to humans and domestic animals, and I'm not going to read every section on this label, but there are seven sections to every pesticide label that you need to understand before you get to the one section you want to know. And what section is that? Does it work? <laughs> Directions for use. What, did somebody say that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so environmental hazards. This product is, this pesticide is toxic to, toxic to fish and aquatic vertebrates. Invertebrates. Do not apply directly to water. Okay? Read your pesticide label. We're all environmentally conscious, or more of us are becoming more and more environmentally conscious this day and don't want to do anything wrong when using a pesticide. Not doing anything wrong starts with reading and following the label. So did I beat that home enough? Read and understand the label, maybe even before you buy the product, and understand the product you're buying. Because all of these, some of these are similar, but some of them are different. But we'll get back to the products in a minute. Fire ant control can be successful, but you've got to understand certain things. They're always going to reinvade because there's always another mound out there that's going to generate another queen that can fly in to where you uh, have just treated or, or been successful. Uh, these products are effective. Uh, the manufacturers, some of them, six months up to 18 months worth of protection. Does that mean you don't have to apply for six or 18 months? 
uh, research shows shows no. Uh, you should probably uh, should probably be looking at two applications a year. Uh, you need to understand fire ant biology. Uh, the fact that if you don't kill the queen, you don't kill the male. Fire ants swarm just like other ants and termites swarm in the springtime. And they have these mating flights. So there can be lots of queens. So reinvasion should be expected. But we can keep them out of our way if we choose to. Uh, I have brought to you, uh, as reference, uh, take home and reading material. Uh, UGA Extension, uh, Texas A&M, and several others uh, put out a regional publication. Uh, those others, the land-grant institutions in Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. There's a copy of Managing uh, Red Imported Fire Ants in Urban Areas for everybody to take home. You can also find this publication and every other UGA Extension publication at our website, just a little searching, and that website is extension.uga.edu. This publication is going to describe a lot more than what I do in my 30, 45 minutes, but it will talk about this two-step method. It will talk about broadcast products, bait products, and mail drenches. Um, I encourage you to uh, take a copy of this today. If you don't have one, uh, find it at our website or contact our office uh, and we'll get a copy into your hands. I'm also referring to some information generated out of Texas A&M Extension. I want to thank them for the use of the slide set, but I brought for you a uh, two-pager on uh, fire ant morphology. Uh, how does it live? How does it reproduce? How does it develop? There are many stages of uh, many classes of, of fire ants in that colony. Uh, so understand that to uh, develop your knowledge of fighting fire ants. And then I brought, in case I don't cover everything about the Texas two-step, which I hope to, I brought for you the uh, steps for doing the Texas two-step. Also over there, Texas A&M has compiled a list of fire ant control products. This is generated by Texas. Uh, we're in Chickamauga, Georgia, and I can tell you even from being in Griffin, Georgia, south of Atlanta for a while, I, you can't find every one of these products. Uh, we've got some of them represented here, so the list is far more extensive than what a typical homeowner can find at their uh, local uh, garden center or hardware store or co-op. Uh, many of these are available uh, for purchase only by the commercial industry. That's another reason why homeowners cannot find them all. But you should recognize, maybe recognize, some of the trade names on that map. All right, so fighting fire ants. How many people have heard that we can uh, take a shovel? All we need is a shovel to fight fire ants. And I didn't bring my shovel. Take a mound, take a, a shovel full of fire ants from this mound, and shuffle them on to this mound over here. That, that, that doesn't work. You can't do that. You get stuck. Fire ants are dangerous. They can kill you. If you're uh, anaphylactic, uh, they, can be, they can be deadly. So don't go messing with them. Uh, how many have heard that you can control fire ants with grits? Wouldn't the world be perfect if grits fixed that problem? Grits fix a lot of things, but they don't fight fire ants. Uh, not every stage of the ant fire ant's life cycle actually consumes dry food. Many of the ants require a worker ant to digest the food, regurgitate it, and feed it to them as a liquid. Fire, uh, grits don't work. Um, if I don't say it again, I want to say it right now. Gasoline works, but gasoline is not a pesticide. It is a biopesticide and it is dangerous to use in this manner. So how many so no matter how many times daddy says go get a gallon of gas and pour it on that fire ant mound, don't do it. Do not use gasoline as a pesticide. It is a biopesticide and will kill anything and everything that that gas comes in contact with. So that's out, let alone it's explosive and dangerous. Don't use that. Fire ant treatments. Um, are available in the form of baits, contact granules, and products that we can drench a mound with. 
You need to understand the difference between those and a little bit more about the ant's biology. Ants, the mound that we see, the above ground portion of the mound, maybe a foot tall, is only a small portion of that fire ant mound. That fire ant mound can go one to three feet deep in the ground. What we see above ground is a small portion of it. That mound is a brood chamber, a nesting chamber. What we see is a small portion. That mound can extend several feet below ground, both horizontally and vertically. Ants have the ability to tunnel, and they will tunnel to water so that when it's dry, hot and dry, ants are fat and happy deep in the ground. They've got a water source. They've got everything they need. Those worker ants will monitor the environment and they will move that brood up and down and left and right wherever that brood needs to be to control the temperature and the and the humidity for those eggs uh, to develop very smart very industrious when it's cold ants go deep so we want to understand that and target our fire ant control efforts when it's cool. Fire ants like it when it's just like me. I like it 70 to 85 degrees. Much more than that, it's about too hot. That's when they're gonna be their most active. So the spring of the year, right now, and then again in the fall of the year are two seasons that research backs up works best for uh, controlling fire ants. Um, you need to understand the difference in the type of product that you're going to use. This is one of the newer ones. And this is one of the older ones. They are not the same, but they look the same. Um, oh, I bet I didn't bring that. No, it's not contained on one of these stuff. Granular products look like grits. It's a dry product. Um, both of these are granular products. That is their formulation. Uh, liquid insecticide is a liquid formulation. Uh, bait products are intended for the target pest to pick up and eat. So it's very specific to what we are targeting. And in that regards, in environmental safety, it's a safer choice. Baits are designed to go out when the ground is dry and it's not going to rain for 24 hours. It says that on the label. Uh, it's on here. I read it earlier. I know it's on here. Avoid mowing one day before and after use. Do not water in bait. If rain occurs, uh, do not water in. Water within six hours of mound application. And somewhere it says on this label, if rainfall is expected within 24 hours. There it is right there. Under environmental hazards. To avoid runoff. So the product is designed to go out when ants are actively foraging, cool weather, 70 to 85 degrees, let the dew dry off the ground. If you're in doubt where their ants are foraging, because remember I said they tunnel left and right, they will have exit, ingress and exit tunnels over here. All right, we disturb the mound, we see the worker ants coming out, but there are all kind of entries and exits off to the side. If you're in doubt whether or not ants are foraging, you can stand and watch the area around the mound, and you'll see them foraging for food. If you're still in doubt, drop a few potato chips on the ground. If the ants are out there foraging, they're going to find those ants within a, a matter of, of, of minutes. And then apply according to label instructions. It takes, I believe this product is four ounces. The active ingredient in ortho fire ant killer is in doxicar applied as a bait. Baits have to be picked up and eaten by the ant, taken back to the mound. They feed it to their friends. When it works, you eliminate the colony. The manufacturer will tell you up to 12 months, but I encourage two applications a year, spring and fall. The second product is a yard treatment product. It is a granular product. 
Again, granulars or kind of like grits, their formulation. This is made to treat a broad area, a broad area, usually where there's more than 20 mounds or so in an area. And you apply according to label rates, and the label rate on this is uh, most of these products are anywhere from one to two and a half pounds per thousand square feet. This just says four tablespoons worth. Four tablespoons worth. I knew there was a four in there somewhere. Thank you, Joe. So a generous shape. You can eyeball what four tablespoons are around the mound. Do not disturb the mound before you apply the bake product. Just walk up on an afternoon when the ground is dry. This is, and there are other products that may or may not get to all these products. This is probably the most effective bait in my mind, quick acting. Andro is a very long lasting effective bait. Many times Andro with the active ingredient hydro, hydromethylon, methylon, is combined with an insect growth regulator, uh, methoprene. This Andro product has the insect growth regulator in it. This one does not. This is also a granular product meant to treat the mound with uh, sprinkle two to five tablespoons of andro around the mound. Nobody's telling you to disturb the mound yet, so a different type of treatment product. This one would have to be, is more effective when it gets watered in. A bait, and it says bait, fire ant killer, mound bait, right there on the label, a bait product needs to be fresh when you buy it, doesn't need to be stored in the garage next to the gasoline or the fertilizer because it will absorb order, odors and, and go rancid and ants will detect that and stay away from the bait. So use fresh product, use it according to label rates, use it when ants are actively foraging, temperature 70 to 85 degrees, And I always went completely brain dead. <laughs> and, uh, and understand that it's that a bait does not get water in, but these contacts would have to be. The active ingredient in this one, hydromethanol, is not a contact. I'm fixing to pick up a contact. This is also a bait, but it is going to be a little quicker acting than this product. Now, what is quicker acting? Some of these products you'll notice results in maybe 48 hours. Some of these you're not going to notice results for six to eight weeks. That's why we're going to combine with a Texas two-step. But I need you to be certain that you understand the difference between baits and contacts. The contact up here with bifenthrin in it, labeled to go out at a rate of One tablespoon or three teaspoons on the surface of each mound. Uh, you can do a uh, broadcast with two and a half pounds, a little, little more than two pounds per thousand square feet. So once again, these products, most of them are labeled to go out from a half pound to maybe two and a half pounds per thousand square feet. Uh, understand the difference between granules, uh, granulated products that are baits, that are mound treatment, sprinkled directly on the mound, or one that's applied over a broad area and it's going to need to be irrigated in for it to be activated. This is a granulated product that has the insecticide on it. And when the granule melts, the insecticide is released and control is provided. Uh, my opinion, these provide the least control. And um, bifenthrin is a non-selective insecticide. That's the active ingredient in this product. And you don't want it getting in waterways. Uh, so keep that in mind when making your selections. The Texas two-step method of fire ant control is one in which By the way, fire ants don't like doing the Texas two-step, and I don't use a whole lot out of Texas, but that is where the uh, uh, a large part of the fire ant research was conducted, so uh, um, I'm glad to be, uh, thankful to be using this today. But fire ants don't like it. So step one, use a bait product. Whichever bait product you choose, 
All right, use a bait plug. Wait a while. You'll need a broadcast bread or a little hand seeder. Don't let me forget to remind you again to wear your personal pre protection equipment as described by the label. Some of these products I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't uh, necessarily want to use without personal protection equipment. And that one I left at the store to be quite honest. But get yourself a little broadcast seeder to help yourself apply accurately. And when you're applying baits, estimate the size of the area you wish to control. Get it on a square foot basis, length times width e equals square foot. Buy the suggested, the right amount of product. You need to read the label before you purchase it to know how much am I going to need to treat 5,400 square feet of my backyard. When you get ready to apply using a handheld broadcast seeder, use a clean one. Use one and dedicate it to uh, fire ant baits or pesticide products. Walk in a grid pattern. When you start, you know, eyeball something on the other side and walk straight to it. You're only putting out two and a half pounds or so per thousand square feet. That's a small amount. You want to get a little bit over the entire area. So walk in a grid pattern, set something up across from you, walk towards it, understand how wide your spread pattern is, turn around and come back. And when you finish going that way, turn it 90 degrees and make a pass kind of on a grid pattern to ensure that you get good, thorough coverage of the area. Uh, the use of that handheld seeder will help you ensure that you get good uniform coverage. Broadcast baits are an easy way to uh, get after fire ants. Uh, some of the safer products come in broadcast formulation. Granules are the safest, in my opinion, the safest pesticide product that we can put in the hands of the majority of homeowners. If you're doing a large area, it is going to be the least expensive method for that. All right. Not, a whole, not as much labor required doing it this way as in mound drenching, which is a, an approved method of fighting fire ants. I'll forget to mound drenching in a minute. Oh, I left my bucket in the truck. But some disadvantages. These baits are slow acting. Uh, it takes a while for Andro to work. Uh, the newer product right here in Doxacarb, uh, personal use has seen maybe a little faster acting results on it. Um, but they're still slow. And you may affect some off-target ants. So you want to use a fresh bait, a fresh bait. All right, don't use what's been stored or left over in the garage. Baits are gonna go out when rain is not expected. You want it dry for at least 24 hours so the product is there when the ants are feeding. You want them feeding, make sure the ants are foraging. Use the potato trick trick, potato chip trick if you need to. There's our cool surface temperatures. The slide says 70 to 95, but the warmer, the more past 85 you get, the less active the ants become, and they're uh, chilling down in the ground, so to speak. Uh, in most parts of Georgia, that's going to be April. Right now, I've got fire ants active in my yard right now. Uh, they need just a few days to start bringing themselves up. Uh, to get that incubator running again because that's a brood chamber that's all they're doing is making more fire ants so we want to trade them when they're active uh, april may through september in most of georgia uh, cooler afternoons during hot weather they will be active so control through the summer can be had there are some of the uh, bait products that made the texas a m slide I uh, did not find, I did see this one, but I did not grab it, and I did not see that one. Uh, there are numerous ant killing gels, so if you've got ant problems on the inside, many of these active ingredients are available in other formulations, such as uh, gels or gel baits. Uh, <clears throat> not going to be as effective on a fire ant, but if you've got Argentine ants, they can be very effective there. So these are just some of the products. Uh, Andro, even though it says fast, uh, it is going to take uh, a month or longer to see good results. Uh, how fast this work can be directly related to the effective job you do in treating. 
So uh, uh, be sure to apply according to label rates. Didn't see that one locally, so we're just going to bump on past it. And then I want to end with these ingrective uh, uh, insect growth regulators um, in the slide set with it. Uh, the Andro product uh, will come with methoprene in it that will affect uh, all life stages in there in the fact that it's going to get that queen and stop her from laying eggs. So that's a strong advantage to the Andro product or a product that's got an IGR in it or an insect growth regulator. Uh, when those workers are gone, they are not replaced. I uh, wanted to also spend a minute uh, talking about mound drenching. Mound drenching is a method that if you want immediate kill, immediate elimination, and you can safely do so, meaning there's not a stream right next door, you're within 100 feet of a well, then you can mound drench and kill, uh, kill a mound instantly and hope that you kill the queen. Remember, if you don't kill the queen, it don't matter. But mound drenching is a, ma a ma method of taking a product that can be mixed with water and using at least a gallon, typically it takes two to three, depending on the size of the mound, on average, a gallon to two. Mix it according to label instructions, and then you pull that one to two gallons directly on that mound. So with a lot of mounds, that gets to be rather laborsome and can be, can be expensive. So I'll let you weigh the cost effectiveness of mound treatments. We can kill ants with boiling water. But boiling water is dangerous too. You gotta be safe getting it from the kitchen to the, to the mound. Uh, boiling water will, will kill about 60% of the ants in that mound. Uh, there's been research that we were hopeful for, but we didn't see too many of the flies once they were released, but there's been some biologicals released to try and help us control fire ants, uh, but we've not got there yet with biologicals. We can keep them at bay at home, uh, we can begin to approach them in larger areas, such as fields or pastures or hay fields, where they can cause uh, significant losses, uh, other kind of losses. Uh, but that gets to be uh, rather expensive. But at home, fire ant control starts with understanding the fire ant biology and accepting the fact that you're never going to eliminate them. Uh, they will reinfest and then treating at the right time of the year for the ants and understanding the difference between bait products that go out when it's dry and bait products that are, or granular products rather, that are intended to be uh, uh, applied when it's dry but are more effective if they get watered in. Uh, understanding that not everything was made just to walk up and sprinkle it on the mound and walk away Read and follow the label so that you understand how to use that product. That is my fight and fire ant talks in the home landscape. With that, if there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. Bingo. I was hoping others would bring up what else I got left up here. Bingo is a dust that has, uh, I believe the active ingredient is going to be delta methrin. There are numerous synthetic pyrethroids. Uh, bifenthrin, delta methrin, lambda cyhalothrin, lambda cyhalothrin. There are numerous synthetic pyrethroids. Uh, they're all basically about as effective as any of the others. Uh, they are uh, non selective insecticides and uh, you should be sure to use them according to label instructions. The Bengal product is specific to treating mounds. Uh, it wants... I want you to disturb the mound when you put that on. Evenly sprinkle one teaspoon of Bengal Ultra Dust over the top of each mound. Do not water in. For best results, apply in the morning or evening hours when ants are active. Normally when temperatures are 65 to 80 degrees. It does not say disturb the mound or whatever, no sir. Uh, most of the, uh, when you disturb the mound, it sends a signal to everybody. 
danger, retreat, don't touch nothing, leave it all alone. So disturbing that mound, uh, unless you're mound drenching, where it, you can't mound drench without disturbing it, is the only time I would know you, you would want to disturb the mound. Now when you go back, after you bait, and you're going to go back, the second step to this is to go back and treat those trouble spots, those trouble mounds. Oh yeah, there's those IGRs. Where's step two? Step two of the Texas two-step is you go back two weeks later and you treat individual trouble mounds. That way you disturb them one day, let the mound settle down, see if the mound is still active, and then decide if you want to go back with a mound topical type product, such as uh, this one or this one or even this one, or a, or a mound drench, and you eliminate the trouble mounds that way. Go and inspect two weeks later and target those trouble bands. That's the second part of the Texas two step. Okay? Individual mound treatments, the way we discussed with uh, uh, drenches or these products for individual mound treatments, I think can be fairly expensive. Uh, but users weigh their own cost. So you're saying use a distributor and distribute the, the bait first. As and close then, to and then, and then yes, come back and start targeting. Yes, sir. Use a bait line. product first. Yep. Give it at least two weeks to be effective. Go back and inspect the mounds after that. Find out which ones are still active. Those active trouble spots, especially ones along walkways, where in an area where you just cannot tolerate a fire ant man. Um, let's talk about the garden in just a second. Uh, go back and, and inspect the mounds and target those ones that have not been affected by some type of direct mound treatment uh, product. Now in the vegetable garden, these products typically are not labeled for use in a vegetable garden, but we can use a bait product around the perimeter of our vegetable garden. Inside the vegetable garden, that's where maybe boiling water comes in hand or maybe some type of treatment prior to getting the vegetable garden established. But for an active vegetable garden, the attack's going to be around the vegetable garden perimeter. The attack zone. So you use that chemical inside? These, like your raised beds? No, sir. I would not. The, the product is not going to be labeled for use inside a garden area. But outside the garden area, along the perimeter, it, is, it would be a labeled site. Another question? Someone there said something that these are safe for pets, so you are okay. Granular with products, because, and I just, you're, you're right, I floated right through there, because I just, uh, um, granular products, because of their formulation, they have a little weight to them, so when we apply them in a turf area, the weight's gonna carry it down to the ground. For these baits, that's good because that's where the ants are and going to find it. And uh, carrying that product down to the surface makes it takes it out of the reach of pets and small children because it's it's kind of hidden down in the turf. Uh, the gravity will take it down and, and be inside, not on the ground where uh, children or pets or birds or others could could, could just pick up the grains. If these granules, any, any of these products, falls on a hard surface, uh, typically that's not where a fire ant mound is, sweep or blow that hard surface off and free of these products, especially by fin thrin. Check out the news article where my colleague Dr. Souter is quoted um, and encouraging the use of, of baits, uh, and even by fin thrin, but use it appropriately. And if it lands on a hard surface, take the time to sweep it off or blow it off into that terrestrial spot in the turf area, in the grass, where it is safe. Because if it's on that hardscape surface and it rains or it irrigates and it's going to run off down the hill, down the ditch, into the storm drain, into the creek. So let's be safe with it so that we do as much as we can not to introduce this into our environment. Apply it where it's supposed to go. Clean up after yourself if the broadcaster spit some on the driveway. Good question on that. 
if you're talking about uh, a large yard, I guess you, you have got to use some kind of a larger distributor, like a like walk behind. They will work. Um, these products will go out through a push behind broadcast spreader. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even dial down most uh, tractor mounted broadcast spreaders tight enough to put this product out. But when you're putting out uh, anywhere from a half pound to two and a half pounds per thousand square feet, uh, that's that's fairly tight. Not a lot of room for error. Mm -hmm. And over a, a, a over an acre size or more, it truly gets to be expensive. But it it's out there. There are products that can be used over those large areas and then equipment to help you get it out. And that's another good reason to work on a grid pattern and go back and forth. Let's say you get all of it out in the first two passes or the first half of it out. Well, then you know I'm putting out too much. I've got to dial my opening down or walk faster so that I can get across the uh, coverage area. Same way with fertilizer. <laughs> Same way with fertilizer or dolomitic lime. I like to make two passes, half amount, half of it applied walking this way, and half of it turn and walk this way. Good, even, thorough distribution. Good questions. Another one? Well, if not, I'll be around until everybody's gone. If you want to come up and talk about some of these products specifically, uh, I appreciate your attendance and your attention. And if we can be of any service to you at the Walker County Extension Office, our number is 706-638-2548. I am out of business cards again today, or I'd give you one, that number again, 706-638-2548. Email me direct questions. I'm Hutch, H-U-T-C-H, at uga.edu. You're in Lafayette, right? We are downtown Lafayette, 102 Napier Street.